Hello, Blue Jays fans. We're ready for the 2030, 2030 MLB season. Where does the time go? Your Toronto Blue Jays are predicted to go 81 and 81. I'm taking the over here. You know, I'm not conv- I'm not confident that we're a great team. I think we're a solid, good team, and I think that we're better than 81 and 81. I'm putting our playoff odds, fan graphs, I think has us projected at like 70% postseason odds. You know, I don't think we're a World Series favorite, but I think we're a strong team. But let's talk about that. Also, I'm going to try to get through recording here without like sneezing and stuff. I mentioned this in the last episode. And it's the same day. I'm recording this on the same day, man. It is the allergies in Maryland today are, are, are brutal, killing me here. No real changes to the team from last year, but or from last year, from last episode at the end of the offseason, but I'll go through it. Bailey is our starting catcher coming off a really bad year, but before that it had been a solid, he'd been backing up, but has been a pretty solid catcher for a couple of years and really... Um, three out of the last five years, but even if that doesn't work out for him, he's really good pitch framer, so hoping that he can uh, just have a decent season. We've got Dylan Dingler, too, who didn't play last year after putting up 2.4 war in 64 games for the Phillies a year before. Uh, good, Good defensive catcher and a captain, so we went cheaper on catcher. We'll see how it works out. Guerrero, Ganoa, Mayo, and Arias, that is our same infield as last year. Uh, around the in the the infield diamond, uh, Barger Barger, sorry Barger and Schreier uh, are on the bench. Will be our backup infielders. They can both play outfield too, but they'll both be in utility utility type roles. It's time for Schreier to. Uh, I mean, you know, he's 27 because he he was a college draft pick. So I mean, he was 21 in rookie ball, and then he kind of stalled out at certain levels, like Double A. He didn't hit great at first. And then he just kind of got stuck at AAA a little bit and then had some injuries in 28 and 29. You can see he didn't play a ton. So because he missed, you know, he had two seasons that were mostly lost to injury. He's 27 now, but it's time for him to make a star turn. I don't think that's going to happen, but he could be a solid player for us, I do believe. Outfield, Orelvis Martinez, welcome back. He missed all of last season. He missed a, almost a season and a half. Uh, we're going to hope he can he can pick up where he was for us as a guy who hits like, a, I don't know, we'll take the average 120 WRC plus and four war. We'll take that. And then Sal Frelick back as our center fielder. Juan Soto in right field because we have uh, Junior Moreno ready to mash in the DH spot. And we also have Mr. Drew Burris, the fifth overall pick from 2026. Uh, he's only 25, but this is another guy who, like, it's time for him to step up and steal a starting job from somebody. He hasn't been able to do it yet. He's been given opportunity. He'll get more opportunity this year. You know, he's playing every 10th game, every 10th. He's playing, like, four out of every 10 games against righties and against lefties and more every 7th, every 6th, every 8th, every 7th. So he's playing, like, this is, like, four days a week against lefties. So he's going to have a chance to prove what he can do. Rotation, Ashby is back. Jared Jones in the last year was Dale. Hagen Smith uh, exploded in the development lab this year in a good way. He, uh, sorry, wrong tab. His current and potential stuff went from, from 65 to 75. What a jump that is. Uh, Noble Mayer, who, uh, this like looks lower to me for some reason, but apparently this is where he's been for a while. His stuff looks lower. Bryce Elder. Then our, our bullpen, uh, Kirkering, Black, Burke is the back end. Brzezicki and Flaherty. Two guys have been around a while in the sim. Moran, Baroa, and Donlin. Some interesting uh, prospects that we have. I mean, we have two in the back end of the top 100. Here we've got Ferrer, who is a second-round pick from 2027 and killed the ball up, through, up until high A last year. But he just got – oh, I just promoted him. Wait, what happened to him? Oh, wait, never mind. He has killed the ball in rookie ball and A ball, and now this year started in high A. And then Frank Figuero, who I think he had a development lab thing. Yeah, his power went from uh, a 50 out of 50 current 60 potential to 55, 65. So uh, that's that's good to see from him. And uh, still, that back button still catches me sometimes. 
And he's, you know, he's hit the ball well everywhere he's been. He was league average in like half a season at AAA last year after the call up. Uh, there are some other interesting prospects. I think uh, Jeff Spindler is one. And I don't know why, like, who I consider our top center field prospect in AAA isn't here, but we can go look at him. He's playing right field. But uh, John Obenhaus, our third round pick in 2027, 70 range, and he's just been crushing the ball. And I, I have uh, I have faith in him. The center fielder is Demarion Ter- Terrell, who was our fourth round pick in 2024 at a high school, and he has not gotten much of a chance at AAA yet. But he hit well in AA last year. But he's another guy who could make a difference at some point, just based off of his glove. I also think that the the pitcher our pitcher prospect rankings. I think we have some some better pitchers in this in our system who aren't. Uh, showing up here like Dalton Juno is one I think this is a guy who could really uh, become a, a better pitcher for us than some of the guys that are out there now he did just lose some potential ratings which is a bit of a bummer but hopefully he'll bounce back I think Chris Harris could also be a decent pitcher for us he also lost stuff we went from uh, 65 to 55 which sucks but may hopefully he'll bounce back so yeah, I mean, Mike Wallace actually is another guy. I mean, he's a uh, two-way player, but, I mean, as a pitcher, like, he really doesn't look bad as a shortstop. He's got 75 range and a decent bat. So all that to say, those are just examples of guys that I think are some interesting players we have in our system that aren't listed on our top prospect page. I'd say the this this double-A team is maybe one of the least interesting, although we do have Brady Murrieta, who is uh, maybe our catcher of the future. He's 22. He's about to repeat double A after he put up a 90 WRC plus in half a season there. And he's a captain and he's got a 70 pitch framing. So we love all of that. But uh, yeah, I don't know uh, why the prospects seem so off on the top page. I think we have a better system than that, than our prospect page shows, but I'm sure every general manager feels that way. I can't remember if I mentioned this in the last episode, but the Orioles went out and they signed Henry Davis and Adley Rutschman, and they already had Samuel Basayo. So Basayo's in the lineup, Davis is a DH, and then they went out and signed Rutschman to a huge deal, and he's their backup catcher and backup DH. Don't know how much he's playing, but they signed him to a five, six-year, $112 million deal to be on the bench. It it boggles the mind. Heston Kerstad's still there, though, doing nothing. Let's see. Is there anything else we want to talk about here? Is there any... Uh... Any other part of this team that we want to look at? Of course, I mentioned in the last uh, in the last video that we have some supplemental round picks. We'll pick twenty seventh. Oops, don't want the mock draft. But we do. Oh, who are they mocking us to take? A college pitcher? Yeah, I'd, I'd probably take that duty if he was there at that point. But then we also have the eighth and the tenth pick in the uh, supplemental round one because of uh, who left. The pitcher Rogers left, and then our catcher Alejandro Kirk left. Probably wouldn't take that guy, if if we're being honest here. And then Daniel Del Rio, uh, yeah, probably wouldn't take that guy. But anyways, that'll be a little later on in the video. It's opening day. It's April seventh. We've got ten million dollars in budget space. Our fans aren't happy because we missed the postseason last year, but we've got Vlad back. Uh, we've got most guys. We, are under most important guys are, are not uh, in there last year. Although Gabriel Rios does have an opt out or starting shortstop. Who's really good. And Jared Jones, who's a good part of our rotation, but if we have young guys step up, I think he becomes expendable. Uh, he's in the last year of his, his deal. He's he's been here for a while. He's had a nice little career for us. I mean, he's put up 13.5 war. He's pitched seven, 758 innings for us. So he's had a nice career for us, but I'm not sure that we're going to pay him 20 some million uh, beyond that, you know, not a lot of guys entering their last year of control. I think Baroa could be a guy that we extend if he has a good year. Uh, but we'll, we'll just have to see what his year looks like first. And Moran, I, this is a make or break year for him. He's been hurt so much. Bailey is just, I think, a one-year deal. Same with Elder. And then we've got some guys entering edu- uh, arbitration, like Hagen Smith uh, is going to get expensive quickly if he performs. Uh, Mason Black is finally going to reach arbitration at, like, age 31. Uh, Barger has, has a big year for him. Tiedemann, after not playing for ten, uh, two straight years, could make 10.1 in arbitration, which is just kind of nuts. Yeah, that's just kind of nuts. Uh, so we'll see what happens here. Um, 
I, I think this team is better than 81 and 81, but, you know, if Vlad and Soto don't get it done again, we could be in trouble. But let's hop into the season here. Let's see what the team can do, and uh, let's go Jays. Let's get back to the postseason. It's June 1st. Things are going pretty well. 30 and 21. We, of course, have to con contend with the Red Sox in our division who have been a freaking dynasty in this sim. Uh, so we're a game back uh, tied with the Yankees. Would, of course, be in first if, by a few games if we were in the AL West. But alas, Toronto is not West enough to justify that. So wild card wise, we're tied with it for, you know, tied for first or second. Tied for the two wild cards with the Yankees. We're three games up on uh, Kansas City, who's tied for the division lead with uh, Jackson Holiday and the Texas Rangers. Expanded standings, they say. Uh, they say you know it's it's kind of believable. We're plus two our Pythagorean, plus twenty six run differential, which really you know we're run worse than the Red Sox. Oh wow, the Brewers down here plus thirty one. So we're third third best in the AL, fourth best, fifth best, sixth best. Man, the Dodgers and Padres some. Some rough luck here, and then some teams ahead of them with good luck uh, as it relates to their uh, run differential and their win-loss record. We've got a lot to get to here because uh, I want to run down my prospects with you on the short list, which is actually just like a long list. And we've got a draft we're going to do some picks for, but we'll get caught up on the team first. Uh, team stats, surprisingly, first in run scored in the AL. And you can see May was really good to us. We we're 12 and 11 in April, 18 and 10 in May. Uh, maybe, you know, the thing we might be missing is a bopper. We're second in batting average, second in on base, but seventh in slug, 13th in extra base hits, and seventh in home runs. So maybe we're going to need to add a bopper to this lineup. That could be that could be something we go after. Bullpen has sucked, 13th in ERA. Uh, starters ERA is seventh. Our, our, our fielding's been fine. I, I'd like this to be an elite defense, but... Can you really say I won an elite defense and play Juan Soto in the outfield in the same sentence? Well, I just did, but it doesn't really make sense. So you can see that the power, power wise, Junior Marino is leading, then Vlad. I'm surprised May is only at eight. I thought he he got off to a hot start with uh, home runs, six in 20 games in April. Yeah, just two in May, uh, but still getting it done with the stick. 113 WRC plus, just not a. Uh, he's walking. Uh, walking a bit more is on bases up, but the slug was way down in May. So let's go here by WRC plus Junior Marino leading the way. Uh, Mayo is there. Uh, Gabriel Arias, Arias, uh, 1.64 to 119 WRC plus. He's a stud. Drew Burris coming out party. Maybe I'm starting to give him more and more playing time. You can see he's got 67 on pace for 67 starts, but 118 games because he's a defensive replacement for Soto late in games when we're leading. 119 WRC plus, so I'm I'm finding ways to get him more and more playing time. Patrick Bailey has been awesome. Cody Schreier, same story as uh, Burris in that he really he's really uh, taking advantage of his playing time. And he's getting more playing time, and Vlad just the 104 WRC plus. It's amazing to me that Vlad Frelick and Soto right here. You can see they're all just underperforming, and we had the best offense in the league. Uh, that's that's a miracle. Uh, Angel Geneo, Genio, Geneo. He is uh, gonna lose playing time here to uh, Cody Schreier more and more if he doesn't get it together. You can see that he had a decent April, trailed off some in May. He crushes lefties, struggling against righties. So that second base job is one to keep an eye on. Dingler's been okay. Uh, Addison Barger has been a disappointment, but. He's got he's got some runway here to, to sort it out as a bench player and also as a guy who's been like a league average bat for us. Or Elvis Martinez, you know, he missed almost a year and a half of baseball, and it's been a rough uh, rough introduction to him. Now his walk rate is up, his strikeout rate is also up over his career. BABIP is two thirteen though, so hoping to get a bounce back there. You can see that his April was just horrid with the thirty two WRC plus May. Hey, we'll take a 118 WRC plus all day. So he's he's still getting a lot of playing time because I think, you know, just worked off, had to work off the rust in April uh, and a 136 BABIP had to work that off. So uh, I'm optimistic that his best, his worst days are behind him here. Pitching side of things, you know, as we said, the bullpen is just kind of a disaster. I can show you. Uh, wait, actually, let me, make, let me look at the starters first. Uh, Jared Jones has been a stud in his walk year. Hagen Smith is striking out everybody. 12.7 Ks per nine and 26.6 strikeout to walk percentage. 
his ERA is 5.21. His FIP is 2.48. Sierra is 2.13. So hopefully better days are ahead. I've never really seen a guy with 5.9 war and one R war over a full season. So hopefully that can even out a bit for him. And by even out, I mean like ERA comes closer to the FIP, not the other way around. Uh, Aaron Ashby, solid, solid uh, start to the year for him. Bryce Elder's been okay. Bryce Elder's been, you know, a fine back end of the bullpen arm. Noble Mayer has been a bit of a disappointment so far. Uh, not so much with the results as with his underlying numbers, but a bit of both. Um, you know, his uh, his BABIP is up a good bit. His home runs are up, you know, three times last year's .6 is up to 1.8. So that's a bit of a bummer. Uh, we're going to need to make some changes here in the bullpen. Quentin Lowe is up and pitching well. Thank goodness he's come up and pitched well. Uh, Kirkering's been fine. Burke's been has a really good ERA, bad FIP. Uh, Dunlin, ERA and FIP tells a story that he's deserving better results. Uh, Moran, I think, is going to need to be DFA'd here. He's just been bad, bad, bad. Um, you know, he had some injuries problems, and he just doesn't seem to have been able to bounce back. And... You know, 26 innings of an 8.31 ERA. You know, the FIP is 4.83, sure. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I mean, strikeout to walk percentage is good, but I've been trying to give him a leash here. I've been trying to, like, but he just gets blown up. Like, you can see six runs, two runs, two runs, four runs. Early on, he was giving up a lot of some of that spring training, but I don't know. Like, I want to give him a little bit longer because I have other guys I can move out. Like, uh, Shamar Rumble is just up because of injuries. We've got three guys on rehab assignments. So, but Rumble's been rough in his first taste of Major League Ball, our first round pick from 2027. Mason Black, really, really bad year for him. Everything's looking bad. I mean, the, the underlying numbers are bad. The results numbers are bad. I've got a little bit of patience for him. He does have an option year left, which I can burn if I need to. Uh, and then Flaherty has also been bad. Trying to be patient with him because he's out of options. But, you know, it's coming about time uh, that we're going to need to make uh, make some changes because we have three, guys, three pitchers out on rehab assignments. Uh, Coleman has been down for a while. He just hasn't been pitching that well, so I was leaving him down. Uh, Brzezicki is out on a rehab assignment. He just went out. He's only pitched once. And Barrow is on a rehab assignment. They have him in the rotation down there, which he's not for me. But, uh, I mean, he can certainly be a good pitcher. But maybe we'll leave him down there for one more start. So I think the move for now will just be sending out Rumble and then calling up uh, calling up Carson Coleman. It also gives us another righty. We had too many lefties in our bullpen. So, go middle. Oops. Middle relief. I think I'm just going to leave everybody on middle relief. Full full disclosure. disclosure watching some of... Uh, nice. Uh, who do I want as our specialist? Uh, sure, you. You can be our backup setup guy. Full disclosure. I was uh, watching some of Spores, Guardian, Sim, and I noticed he doesn't use a middle reliever. And the middle reliever does tend to get too many innings. So, maybe he explains that at some point. And maybe that's why. But... Uh, yeah, let's go use less often on these two. I think maybe we'll move Mason Black out of that role and, and move Quentin Lowe. Just like, I mean, he didn't even, I don't even think Lowe was on my team to start the season. So, uh, all right, let's see how that looks. Go middle relief there. And then Coleman can be like our backup setup guy. Emergency SP. Okay. Uh, yeah, I noticed uh, Paul didn't have a long reliever, which maybe, like, if I don't have an obvious dominant, like, starter arm, like, a, sometimes I use that long reliever for, like, a young guy who I don't want to throw right into the rotation. Maybe I'll use it for that. But I'm going to try this out for a little bit. I was I was watching Paul's, uh, some of Paul's video while the plumber was, uh, I had to be at a different house for, long story short, I wasn't home. But I had, uh, had a laptop with me and, was uh was watching some of Spore Sim and it kind of reinvigorated me here. I've been recording a lot lately and also uh, the allergies were killing me as I mentioned. The allergy medicine's working today. Took it today, which means I'm tired, but I'm not sneezing everywhere. Uh, and you know, watching Paul Sim, I was you guys won't see this for months, so it's gonna be a long time ahead in his sim. But I was watching the stretch run in 2025 and I felt reinvigorated to come back here to this sim. So that's what we'll do with the bullpen for now. We've got a couple more arms coming back soon. Let's look at some of our prospects. 
This is always a fun part of the sim for me. Barreria, these are my shortlisted pitchers. Barreria, uh, I think, is trying to pitch himself. You know, he's hit a rough patch here, but trying to pitch himself into, like, a way to get a chance in major leagues. I'm not sure that's going to be with us unless they have a lot of injuries. I'm just not sure he's going to get there for us. Mason Brassfield, who we got from the Yankees in the offseason, really struggling in AAA after having a pretty decent AAA uh, season with the Yankees last year. So that's a little bit of a bummer. Uh, John Carmen is in high A. This is our first round pick from 2028. He missed a lot of time. He missed like the whole 2029 season. I can't remember what the injury was. What was it? He had a torn flexor tendon. Yeah, and then he's come back and had, wow, several injuries here. Maybe we need to... Oh, he's hurt again? Recurring back spasms. He's out for three weeks. Shoot, why am I not on status here? Maybe we need to uh, dial back his pitches further because he keeps getting hurt. So that's a bummer. He's pitching really well again. He's I mean, he crushed A ball in 2028, missed 2029, and then in 2030 is crushing high. I mean, he's 23, but to come back and do that after missing a year is great. I wish he would stay healthy, looking like a good arm. Uh, Don Dunlin, we talked about. He's up fourth round pick from 2027, not doing too well, and he wasn't good last year for us. Honestly, probably more of a tweener guy, a uh, quad A guy, a 40 man guy who comes up when you need arms because of injuries or whatever but you know as a fourth round pick you'll take that outcome a guy who can hopefully contribute some positive war to the major league roster Fluority, we talked about um chris harris is our first round pick from 2029 you can see i'm heavy on the college arms he he pitched really well in a ball after he was drafted bumped him up to high a i think it's time for him to go to double a and 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 keep mar keep marching his way could be maybe on the major league roster sometime next year if he keeps pitching well Dalton Juno, same story. This is our third round pick from 2029. Uh, pitched really well in AVAL last year, and now he's doing his thing in high A. So I think we'll go ahead and bump him up. He's a top 200 prospect. So we'll bump hip, him up to double A as well. So double A team just got an injection of some arms. Uh, John Caston. Why am I? Do I have two? Ca oh, Carmen. The other one's John Carmen. I was like, didn't we look at this guy? John Caston. Uh, is a six-round pick from 2025 who's had a respectable minor league career, uh, but it's kind of stalled out in double A. Uh, he's not pitching terribly, but uh, he, 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 got, uh, he got the call up from after a solid start in high last year and then was fine in, in high A, uh, in double A last year and has struggled a bit this year. We'll keep an eye on him. He's obviously going to stay there for now. Uh, Klein Hens was an eighth round pick from 2029. Who's just 19. So he's still in rookie ball. Luis Mora, a potential bullpen piece for us. If he can develop, he just got called up. I put him up to double a recently, uh, where he's only pitched three innings. So small sample, Harry Placencia, Placencia fifth round pick from 2026. He's out with elbow inflammation. Uh, he's an A ball. I put him there cause I was kind of hoping he would start some, but maybe they just see him as a reliever. This control is going to be an issue. I don't think it was that low when we drafted him. Oh, maybe it was. Wow. Okay. Fair enough. Oh, where'd you go? Harry? There he is. So yeah, maybe looking like a bullpen piece. If he can get this, if he can max out that stuff and have two dominant pitches, maybe he can get away with that 30 control, but it's going to be tough, especially with this low home run, uh, against rating. And the extreme fly ball, but he's only 22. We can see Mike Reiki, high school arm, fourth round pick, 2029 in rookie ball. Romero, a two way player, fifth round pick, 2028. He's in high A, struggling with the bat, but not getting a ton of playing time, and doing well with the arm. 3.18 ERA, almost said FRA, but it's a 4.01 FIP, not a FRA. Shamar Rumble, we talked about, back down at AAA after a pretty bad stint with the big club. Uh, Hagen Smith, honestly, you can probably take off this short list at this point. Uh, he's up at the big club doing well. Levi Sterling, fourth round, 2024. Uh, maybe finding his groove. Maybe finding his groove in AA. He had a good good time in AA last year, too. Maybe it's time to, uh, I mean, his peripherals are, have been better than his results both time. I don't hate the numbers here. Yeah, let's, Levi, Levi's ready for AAA. He's 23. He's still unhappy about it, though. 
team record and roll on team. All right, buddy. Well, you're back on a you're up on a better team. Tiedemann, R.I.P. to your rotator cuff. Turnquist is in AAA and, you know, just kind of doing okay. I think he's kind of similar to some of those guys that are kind of like 40-man depth pieces. Mike Wallace, second-round pick, 2029, a two-way player, uh, college player, destroying high A with – nah, never mind, not destroying high A with the bat. 117 WRC, a solid year at the bat and a solid year uh, with his – with his 3.15 FIP, but the ERA 4.74. Now he's 22, so he's getting a little old for the level, but I think I'll leave him there for uh, another month, maybe, for this University of Maryland uh, graduate that's probably uh, an Orioles fan. I actually probably didn't graduate. But uh, I think, yeah, the 75 infield range with the good bat is really great to see. I could probably call him up, but I'm trying to be less aggressive with call-ups, trying to fight that instinct a little bit because I think I've been promoting guys too soon. So I'm going to leave him down for a little bit. Jan is in AAA, is a good depth piece uh, on our 40-man. Let's go to the batters. Uh, Moreno, Burris, Schreier, we don't need to look at. Uh, Camarillo, struggling in AAA. Third-round pick from 2024. Not sure he's got a major league future. Rusty Dorsey, or Dorset, since he's from Pennsylvania. Six-round pick from 2027. Looking like a piece, maybe. He is in high A, only 150 plate appearances and just turned 21, so we'll leave him there, but he's just doing nothing but hitting, and he's walking a lot too, so uh, encouraged by that. Uh, Ignacio Ferrer, our second-round pick from 2027, a top 100 prospect. He is in high A, 214 plate appearances and hitting really well. I'm going to fight the urge and try to give him another month there to see how he does. I don't want to promote him too soon, but I think he's ready for Triple A. Frank Figura. Figuero? Figuero. Uh, crushing it in AAA right now. Uh, crush it in... Wait, what's going on? Hold on. Oh, that was 2029. All right, crush it in AA last year. Was okay in his first taste at half season in AAA, and now stepping up this year. Don't love the 55 range at second base, but he could play a s decent second and a really good third base. Uh, nine, number 97 prospect in baseball. This was a an international signing in 2025 for $570,000. Uh, and I think he will be with the big club, if not this year, sometime next year, early on. Norbeto Hunter, second-round pick from 2028, corner outfielder who is in double-A and hitting pretty well this year. Kevin Jennings, a catcher, fifth-round pick from 2029 in rookie ball. Looks like a potential uh, stud defensively. Jim McEckern is crushing it in, in high A after really struggling there last year. I think given his age and that he's repeating the level, We'll go and promote him to double A. Double A is getting a lot of talent from the high A team. Jorge Moreno, uh, holding his own as a 22-year-old in, in high A. He was there last year and kind of held his own too. So we'll continue to give him time there and hope he can he can take a step forward. Anthony Murphy is in double A, hitting really well. Uh, he spent a little time last year and struggled. I'm not going to promote him just yet. John Murphy, the, the infielder, corner infielder we got, from the Yankees in, I think it was the Brady Singer trade in the offseason. He was in high A just murdering the ball. Uh, 200 WRC plus, so I promoted him 15 games ago, and he's hitting well in AAA. Brady Meredia, one of the more exciting developments of the Sim so far is how well he's playing this year. Fourth round pick from 2026, a high school catcher, captain. Look at this personality. Uh, he made it to double A last year and wasn't great but is absolutely crushing the ball right now. He just turned 23 in April. I think I'm going to give him one more month there, keep building that confidence up, and then get him to AAA. And honestly, this I think he could be on our roster next season opening day if he continues his path. This one is a bummer. John Obenhaus, our third-round pick from 2027, the 70-range outfielder who's been showing promise with the stick, out for the year with a torn meniscus. He was off to a great start, first 30 games, a 135 WRC+. Plus. Uh, took a step forward from last year's half a season in AAA. That's a bummer. I still think he could be on a trajectory to be in Toronto early next year, but a bummer that it's not going to be this year because I thought he had a chance. David Rivera, fifth-round pick from 2027, hitting well in AA. I think this was a guy that I might have just added to the short list, right? Yeah. Oops. Yeah, he. I, I think I picked up on him that I didn't have him on my short list and just did it. He's in double A with a 131 WRC plus, but he's kind of been pushed all around by the AI, classic AI movement there. Ismael Romero is a two-way player. Did we talk about him already? I think we did. If not, he's struggling in high A and going to stay there for now. Uh, Jeff Spindler, 
absolutely murdering high A pitching. He's tw- he just turned 21, fourth round pick from 2028, but I think he's got to go to double A. He crushed rookie ball, and then last year he crushed A. I think it's time to be a little more uh, a little more aggressive with his promotion. So we're going to promote him to double A. Just more talent being infused in double double A. Fourth round pick from 2024, a high schooler. I love when high schoolers develop, just because it's so hard to do. But Demarion Terrell. Uh, hitting really well in AAA, and he's got the 75 range. Sal Freilich better start looking over his shoulder if he keeps putting up uh, that league average nonsense because we've got a gold glover coming to take his job. Uh, This is a monster season from Jesus Vargas, repeating high after struggling there last year and just like, guys, I am ready for the next level. But unfortunately, he's hurt right now, so I can't promote him. Uh, But looking like maybe a breakout year or maybe he just is crushing lesser competition. Mike Wallace we talked about. Hagen Wright. Uh, ninth round pick, 2025, absolutely sucks in limited time in AAA last year after he had a pretty decent time last year there, but I'm not sure he's got a future as a major leaguer. Addison Barger we've talked about. Uh, he's struggling a little bit. So that's that's the that's the prospect situation. It's on to the draft uh, where we will pick 27th, and I think I said this earlier in the video. I was re- recorded the earlier parts yesterday, but we're eighth and 10th in the supplemental round. Love to see it. You got the Cubs, O's and Marlins with the first three picks. Let's jump into those picks and, and see how it goes. Uh, All right. Oh, I'm on catcher frame. Like, why is this all catchers? Look at this guy with his 70. Oh, whoa. This guy's going to go early. Yeah. That guy's awesome. Here's a guy I could take later, I think. Like sometimes it's just be like, all right, let's let's stock up on good defensive catchers because then if you hit on them, like worst case, they're gonna do things for your lower minors pitching staff. But then Meredia, a guy like him, he develops and is like, oh, potential stud. So all right, so let's see who the the Cubs take here first overall. Left fielder Jarvis Tank McCat McIntosh. Uh, so he's a first base DH type that they're probably gonna play in the outfield. But who cares with this bat? Who really cares? Get this man to triple A immediately. All right, double A? Yeah, get that man to double A right off the bat. Love it. Jarvis Tank McIntosh. The O's, who are they taking? Oh, the O's? This is so funny. The O's have three catchers on the roster. Now, of course, it's fine to take this guy. This guy's a stud. Sure, take him all day. But the O's, commitment to catchers in the sim is amazing. They have three starting catchers on their roster. Adley's on the bench. Love that. That's so funny. Uh, Miami, Josh Glantz Culp, a high school third baseman. That's a lot of risk in a pick that high, man. That's a lot of risk for the third overall pick. I mean, sure, if he hits, in five years you've got a stud. But, oh, San Juan? Who are they going to welcome? Josie, Josie Armando Bullet Johnson. The high oh college short, shortstop that's a great pick that's a great pick Ooh, stud S- absolute stud let's see one more pick let's see who uh, Minnesota takes Kevin Ice Prince yeah he's a corner outfield high school bat I would never take some, with a twelve million dollar bonus man I would never take that guy there all right let's go to uh, for Toronto let's go to our draft draft hitter thing let's just sort. Uh, looks like a lot of a lot of high school hitters at the top. Let's see. Scouting director recommends Jeremy Johnson, which is not surprising since that's his top rated dude. Uh, yeah, I mean I don't love it, but you, there's going to be something you don't love. Twenty seventh overall about everybody. Uh, let's look at college bats. The top is this fifty five. Mm, he's oh he's nineteen. He's a JUCO guy. Okay. High loyalty, low financial ambition. I love the uh, 65 range. Love that, but he can't play the outfield at all, huh? So he's not going to be a utility guy, but can play all all three infield positions. I mean, well, I, I say all three. I, I exclude first because everybody can play first. Uh, and he only wants 550. Competition level's poor, but still, I mean, that's a... Here's an 18-year-old college guy, another JUCO guy. Uh, really, he's just a high school player. Um Let's see. Mike Ahern is just high work ethic, high intelligence, but it's just not good enough for me to take. I don't like the ceiling there. I don't like anything about it. Well, I shouldn't say I don't like anything about it. There were things I liked about it, but not enough to take him. Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't know. I'm really not loving these college bats. Here's a 75 infield range. Whoo! That's not a bad player. Another junior college guy. He's only 20. He's pretty developed for a 20 year old. He only wants 550. He's got high work ethic. Honestly, this is far and away my favorite hitter. Because, like, none of the other guys had, like, played a premium position well. This guy absolutely does. Never want to miss on a catcher this side. Dan Carroll. All right. Decent bat with work ethic, but not defensive. So, yeah, I think Ben Simpson I like, but let's look at college. Or, I mean, yeah, college starters because there, there could potentially be a guy there who we like even more. Right, like this guy, Mike Burks. Ah, low intelligence, not going to do it. Not going to do it, man. Maybe next round. Maybe in the supplemental rounds if you're there. But I like the shortstop better than you. Uh, I still like the shortstop. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I like I like some of these guys. I hope some of these guys are here in the supplemental round. Here's a couple high work ethic, high intelligence guys. Now, if I ask my scout who the best starting pitcher is, who's he going to give me? High school starting pitcher? Uh, that guy looks like a potential stud, but he's also a potential like never makes it above high A ball. Yeah, I like the I like the bat. I like that shortstop, Ben Simpson. Is he going to be a superstar? I mean, probably not. Like, he's he's average power, below average eye. But, I mean, if if he plays this kind of defense and has, like, a 95 to 100 WRC+, plus, he's going to be, like, a 4-plus win player. And he wants below slot. He only wants 550,000. We're going for the, uh, for the, high, the junior college shortstop. Out of Miami-Dade College, the Toronto Blue Jays select Ben Simpson. I think I did that in reverse order. His name should go first. But, yeah, uh, let's draft Ben Simpson. I like that. I don't mind that play at all. All right, so who's still – let's see. Let's see who my scout recommends first. Chris Fatula, a high school right fielder. High school corner infield outfielder, man, has got to be pretty well on my priority list, if I'm being honest with you. I, go, I looked at this guy earlier, right? Yeah, don't mind that 65 infield range. He can't play the outfield. This was the 19-year-old. Yeah, I don't know. That's a decent player but no one I'm falling in love with here I think honestly we're probably going to go arm here judging by the the college bats I could look at high school bats but honestly like the first few rounds I heavily lean uh, yeah that arm sucks Jesus I heavily lean into the college um, I could you know I'll look at let's look at the high school players real quick I mean this guy looks like he could be awesome but I'm just not that interested Oh wow. Okay. I'm I'm always if you've got 80 grade potential power, I'm interested just for fun. Regardless of the rest of your profile. You're a corner outfielder. That's a bummer. Maybe you could fake it at second base for me. Maybe you could fake it at third. I don't know. 50 arm at third is really really dicey, but he I mean, he could play left and right and first and then second and third in a pinch. And that power is just tantalizing. High intelligence too doesn't just listen he takes notes i really like this guy he could bust but i don't know I, i'm a sucker for guys who i mean an 80 grade potential power what does osa think of him osa has him as an 80 grade too doesn't like his defense quite as much i mean i have another pick in like two picks let's look at the college starters because there were a bunch that i thought were good like worth uh worth picking. So yeah, the low intelligence guy I don't I don't mind him at this point. I, I think he's a decent pick. Chris Bird, I think, is a good pick. I think that's a fine pick. Like basically all these college pitchers are defensible. I might go ceiling on the low intelligence guy because his stuff ceiling is so high. But there's certainly 
I, I think what I'm going to do is, because there are enough of these guys and I pick again soon, I think I'm going to draft... Uh, draft the 80 power guy. There's a 70 power guy. Is he any better with the... Just thinking like if his uh, defensive profile is better. I'm going to pick this guy because he's fun. And one of those pitchers will be there for me next. But we're going to go uh, Phil Elmendorf. We're going to draft him. And now... So that's the supplemental... Wait, do we have back-to-back -back picks? Oh, no. We were 8, and then it was the Red Sox 9, and then we're 10. Got it. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with... They picked Zach Jenkins, who is not even on my radar. That pick sucks. <laughs> Breaks my heart to see the um, the Red Sox make a bad pick. They've been so good in this sim. Good. They could use to be knocked down a peg. Uh, is this guy really like a full-time reliever? Yeah, unless he develops another pitch. So Mike Burks, I mean, he's already got three good pitches. You know, don't like the intelligence situation going on. But, yeah, at this point, I, I got to go Mike Burks. That's just... That's just too good of a too good of a position to to not take. Oh, Fatula is still out there. My scouting director still wants me to take him. I don't know, man. I kind of would rather take a a guy uh, that's not him. <laughs> would kind of rather take a a different guy. This guy's still out here, Bennett Renoff. Trying to look for some guys that have some defensive ability. Like, a lot of these guys are brutal. I mean, 55 alpha range is fine, but, like, none of them are like, well, this guy's bad, actually. Looks pretty good at his peak. Yeah, I don't hate this play. I mean, that's a really high potential player. Yeah, this is the point where I'm fine taking some high scores. Who is the best college bat left? Bennett Renouf, who's basically a college bat. I mean, a high school bat. I don't like your personality at all. Decent player here. Yeah, totally decent player there in Hargrove. Catcher. Any really good defensive catchers that also have some bat? None of those guys. Let's check these. Uh, That guy's bat isn't good enough to justify a pick. I don't think this guy is yet either. I don't know. I kind of like this guy. Basically, I mean, he's basically a high school player. Uh, he'll be 20 in a month. I guess he's like a junior college guy. Uh, I don't know. I think I like Mike Zaz. I think I like uh, taking a risk on his ceiling here in the second round. And then maybe we'll go back to a safer pick, like one of the college arms. Brad Bryant, high school reliever. Yeah, I'm not taking a reliever in the third round, bros. So we've got 150 potential. Um, oh, yeah, this guy's good. I like Daniel Rivera. High work ethic. He's already pretty developed. He's probably going to be in, like, double A at least by the end of the year. Uh, yeah, I like Daniel Rivera there. We're going to go with that. Fourth round, recommending a high school right fielder, Jeff Brand. Oh, two-way player. Let's look at this. Uh, I mean, he's okay. He's okay as a pitcher. I mean, the contact is great. I kind of like this high control guy with a great personality. He's 22. He's a little older. Got 160 potential still out there. Dan Huth, who also looks like a really good arm, maybe. That's an interesting player. I don't want to go too heavy on the high school yet, though. Lots of two-way players. Jeff Bram was two-way. Look at if there's any like high work ethic, high potential guys. Ooh, a switch hitter. 
switch hitter, corner outfielder who's 22. You know that that's a little more interesting to me. I want I want this guy. I want this switch hitter who potentially could be a power bat. No, he's a power bat from like, um, okay, yeah. Was it this guy? Was it, yeah, David Metz, Metza. I like him. Here's another switch hitter though. Don't like him as much. Switch hitter here. Nah. Yeah, let's try Metza. It's our fifth round pick. Tomiak. Uh, yeah, cool. I I see the I see what you're feeling there, Scott. I see it. I'm still on college bats here. What are college uh, starters? Yeah, I like this guy. I'm gonna I'm gonna take Eddie Conrad. Let me remind myself of how many pitchers I've taken. I mean, that'll give me three really solid, um, three really solid college arms. Now I do have a, I have drafted a lot of college arms that have moved up for the way system, and I have a little bit of a log jam, but none of them like popped off. So I'm I'm, I'm looking for a guy that can like pop off for me here. Uh, and high work ethic, high intelligence gives me hope. Bonus demand is like almost 400 under slot. Yeah, let's go with him. Right, let's do a couple more picks here. Scouting director recommends David Salinas, a high school pitcher with low loyalty, low leadership, low intelligence, hard pass. Potential really good reliever. I try to stick to college if I'm going reliever. Oh, wait, I want all pitchers. Like this, this guy is interesting to me because he's so well developed and he's got the work ethic. I kind of want to take Jorge Arellano, Ar Arellano here. Yeah, let's draft him out of Oklahoma, out of Oklahoma State University. All right, next he wants me to take Brad Bryant, who's the high school reliever. Mm, I'm not really in love with that. That's another high school reliever with a uh, high work ethic. Everybody here really good defensively. Everybody's really mad defensively. Here's a 70 range shortstop. 21 years old. Bat. I don't know. A couple 65 range guys, but they're pretty low. I mean, actually, Jeff Horton. Let's draft Jeff Horton here. Bat is decent. Outfield range at 65. Let's go Jeff Horton. All right. Round eight, Chaz Vines, high school pitcher who I don't really love. Uh, let's go look at catchers. Are there any like ace framers out there who are also decent players maybe? This guy's not bad. And he's 21. Like, if he fulfilled this potential, like, he'd probably be a major league piece with that defensive profile. Well, we've got a couple other guys to look at here. Uh, only 265 framers left. Yeah, let's go um, with Billy Campis, the uh, catcher out of the University of North Georgia. Let's do one more pick. Prince Troft. High school center fielder. I don't mind him. You know, you've got my attention with that suggestion, Scout. That's what I'm trying to say. See up here somewhere. No, interesting. Interestingly enough, he's not up here. He's, who's the highest overall? 25. So no, it's not like he's doing that. I wonder where this guy is. Oh, there he is. Okay. So there's a 45. It's just an alphabetical thing. But a couple 50s still out there. There's this catcher who, yeah, don't love him. 
Yeah, okay. I'll do this Prince Prince Troft. Trout. Um, Prince Trout. Let's call him Trout for sure. Yeah, I'll take that suggestion, Scout. Good idea. Okay, I'll finish the draft from there. We'll wrap the episode here. But we're 30 and 21 and battling for a postseason position in our uh, scaled down postseason. I'm thinking about maybe, you know, I was watching, again, I was watching Spores, so I'm thinking about maybe expanding my postseason to where it's four wild cards and the two division winners get a bye. Thinking about that. Maybe maybe I'll do that. Who knows? Who knows what I'll decide? But that's one thought that's in my mind right now. But thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Uh, if you did, you know, hey, hit that like button. Subscribe. Whatever all those things are that help the channel and help more people find it. Um, or subscribe to the Patreon. Or just like keep watching. Or don't. Live your life. I'll go live mine. Talk to you guys next time. Bye.